In the previous lecture, we introduced the concept of a graph and a network, and we established that the difference is just in the terminologies. In the graph, it's called vertices and edges, while in case of networks, we have nodes and connections. However, there is a slight more difference. Let's discuss it further. Graph theory was introduced by Leonhard Euler in 1736 when he attempted to solve the problem of the seven bridges of Konigsberg. We will come back to this problem in a while. However, the important thing for us over here is that graph theory has been around for a while as a very stable discipline of mathematics and has given solutions to a number of problems that could not be addressed with other disciplines of mathematics. What makes graph theory different from other disciplines of mathematics is that it allows to study the behavior of objects in relation to one another. A concept level difference is that a graph may represent any size of a graph, while the term network is more often used for graphs of relatively bigger sizes. So, graph theory is a discipline of mathematics and network analysis is a subfield of it. In 1960, Pell Erdos and Alfred Renai introduced complex network as a big network where connections are established at random. This was the first type of complex networks that basically associated the word network with bigger graphs. From there on, different real-world problems were represented as a big random network and their properties were observed. Later, a Romanian researcher Albert Barabasi introduced the second type of complex networks, that is, scale-free networks. In these networks, the nodes do not have a random choice of connections. They rather follow the preferential attachment mechanism in order to connect to other nodes. According to this mechanism, popular nodes are going to gain and attract more connections as compared to majority of the lesser popular nodes. We'll have more discussion on it in the coming lectures. So, at present, complex networks have two types, there is random networks and scale-free networks. The networks are analyzed to perform different kind of tasks that can be separated into two types, that is static analysis and dynamic analysis. In the case of static analysis, we may observe the properties of a specific section or a specific part of the network, that is the study of local features, or we may be looking at the global properties of the network. It may be identifying influential entities in the network or just looking for specific patterns. Any of this analysis would require a one-time data of the network. The other type of studies are the dynamic analytics that require the data of the network for different times which is being used to analyze the behavior of a specific node over a period of time how nodes establish new connections, what kind of behavior they portray. We will also be looking into these two types of network analysis that is static analysis and dynamic analysis in the coming videos. Keep watching. Thank you.